Okay, let's kick this off. Um, just can I just check that I sound clear? The audio's okay. You can see the presentation in front of you on the screen. Good. <laughs> oh wow! Yep. <clears throat> okay, so before we uh, jump into that, let me just introduce myself. Um, my name is Paul Holden. I work as a senior developer for Moodle as part of the Moodle Workplace team. Um, so today I'm going to talk about one aspect of Workplace um, which has um, particular interest for developers um, and that is multi-tenancy. Um, I will give a brief overview of what multi-tenancy is, how we use it and how you are likely to want to use it as a developer. Um, I'll go over some of the resources that the Workplace team have created in order to assist you and hopefully give you a flavour by the end of it um, of what you can do with it. Um, <clears throat> so before I get into anything overly technical um, and for those who weren't uh, joining from my colleagues presentation about Workplace, I'm just going to go briefly over what multi-tenancy is. So multi-tenancy is a feature that allows an organization, a business, an institution to effectively run many instances of workplace within a single site. Uh, each instance is referred to as a tenants, so they are kept isolated from each other. Uh, the users uh, of the site belong to a given tenant and the users from one tenant are likely to experience a dramatically different look and feel of the site compared to users in other tenants. Um, all the tenants have their own content, learning objects, activities, etc. And specifically in regard to workplace features, they all have their own organization structure, programs, certifications, dynamic rules, custom reports, and certificates. One thing that is worth mentioning is the final bullet point there, which is the ability to share entities between tenants and this is something I'll touch on later and it is of relevance to developers. Isolating tenant users. <clears throat> what does that mean? Um, so as discussed on the last slide, uh, multi-tenancy allows for multiple instances of workplace on a site. One of the important aspects of this is the concepts of users belonging to a tenant. From a manager or administrator perspective, the users within each tenant are isolated from users in other tenants. For example, if I am a manager and I want to allocate a user to a program or issue a certificate, award a badge, I can only do so to those users within my own tenant. So the bullet point there about the roles that Moodle Workplace creates for you, these um, are predefined and allow you as an administrator to um, delegate responsibility within the tenant to users. Um, so you would have a you can have a tenant administrator, a manager and a users. And the documentation I've linked here at the bottom is a good place for you to read about those things. Now let's get to the part when we talk about how you as a plugin developer need to uh, work with this. So <clears throat> these are the three really key points that need to be covered by a developer working on a Moodle plugin with the intention of also supporting workplace. I'll cover each of the, these three points in more depth shortly, briefly, we want to make sure that any given user can only view other users they share a tenant with. So this is the first two bullet points on the slide. And for those courses that are shared between tenants, ensure you are following existing Moodle guidelines regarding group mode settings and how they affect list of users. Let's look in detail about each of these things. User listings. So. 
assuming that you are familiar with Moodle, you will have seen user listings everywhere. They are used throughout Moodle on various UI and various screens. Um, so now we will take the assumption that you have a plugin or a piece of code that provides interactions for users or reports users' interactions within your plugin. So this part is especially relevant to you. The distinction on the slide between the first two um, points is useful for you to know, um, and that's the distinction between accessing or listing users outside a course versus inside a course. If you are listing users inside a course, you should already be covered, assuming you are respecting the course group mode settings. So this is a part of core Moodle and is no different in workplace. Assuming you are respecting the course group mode settings, you will all already be covered. The, there are, however, some plugin types that may exist inside a course that report on non-enrolled users. So these may be enrollment plugins or, or any kind of report, really. These plugins must take note. To implement the um, safe listing of users, we have a component callback. So component callbacks are a common feature of Moodle. Um, they allow any piece of code to call methods from install plugins. So we have a, a component callback called get users sub query. This exists in the multi-tenancy plugin and it performs all calculations regarding the current user's tenants and capabilities and generates a little piece of SQL that you can insert into your query that will effectively make it tenant aware. So current user capabilities that are taken into account for this. So one of the capabilities that is granted to a site administrator by default is the capability to switch between tenants, uh, which allows any user with this capability to view users from any tenant. And this is automatically taken into account for you in the call component callback. I'm just checking the chat. I think I'll continue. So individual users, this is um, this is to ensure that any given user of the system is able to access the details of any other given user of the system. Uh, so in addition to the normal capability checks that your plugin may implement, you also need to ensure that they all respect the multi-tenancy rules. In order to achieve this, we have another component call back in the multi-tenancy plugin, which is listed there in the second bullet point. Uh, similar to the one I described on the previous page, this method performs calculations based on the current user's tenants, whether they can view a uh, a given user based on belonging to a shared tenant or they're having the capability to view users in all tenants. So this is related to the previous slide uh, where your plugin, your code, your piece of work has a listing or a report of users and you want to uh, drill down to more in-depth detail by clicking on an individual user. Um, by using this callback, we can ensure that the user is able to access these details. So the callbacks, everything I'm talking about now is all referenced in the links, uh, which we will share at the end of the presentation. They're also part of the presentation as well as I go through. So I've talked a couple of times about respecting the course group mode within a course. So this isn't something new to workplace. This is just something that exists within Moodle. It is a way of um, isolating groups of users within courses. <clears throat> so the way tenants work is about isolating groups of users within tenants, but with shared entities, i.e. entities that users from multiple tenants can access, we need to preserve that isolation um, between the users in each tenant. So this is achieved using uh, Moodle groups within the course. And 
the re so the recommendation would be then to set the course up uh, when designing it in separate group modes and preferably forcing that group mode. So as a developer, all you need to do is fully support these course group mode settings. And the, the documentation here I've added at the bottom covers that in depth. Uh, all this documentation for developers is really in depth and definitely worth looking, looking through. So I've given you a talk about what the three really key things are. Let's now talk about some of the um, resources uh, that we have that can help you achieve this. So if any of you uh, access this um, Moodle Workplace site on GitHub, this is public. Um, we publish uh, code, examples, repositories in here. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the key ones which I think will be more useful um, for you. So we have the multi-tenancy testing platform. We have an example plugin that uses this multi-tenancy. Uh, we have some integration tools. And the final point is perhaps less relevant to developers, but it's uh, very relevant for translators among you. Um, we publish information which aids the translation of workplace. So, the multi-tenancy testing demo, what is that? So, uh, workplace itself is composed of really three things. So we take the core Moodle, uh, which is something you would all be presumably familiar with. So currently that is version 3.8. We, as a matter of course, tend to track the latest stable version. So in addition to Moodle, there are a selection of core modifications to support multi-tenancy. And we have um, a stripped down version of the multi-tenancy plugin so this plugin is similar to the plugin that ships with Workplace and comes with a lot of testing utilities, uh, which is obviously important if you're writing code for that. And the important thing to note, it does include the uh, an identical public API to the version in Workplace. So if if you are writing code against this, the API provided by this plugin, it will work in Workplace. If I just briefly skip back to the uh, core modifications, which I rather glossed over. So when I talk about the core modifications, um, to, to support multi-tenancy across core Moodle, there are various places which we have had to uh, modify. So this is uh, places where you would select from users. So by default, uh, Moodle would give you a list of all users across the site, whereas in Workplace, we really only want them to give you access to users within your own tenant. Um, so the testing demo, it doesn't include all the modifications to support multi-tenancy, but we have included um, enough to give a hopefully quite comprehensive examples of how how these uh, changes would work in practice. So we've included modifications for the user selector element. So this is a common element used across Moodle for selecting users. Uh, the manual enrollment plugin and the awarding and viewing of user badges. Um, the commits are all logically grouped within the repository and are worth just looking for interest and if you want inspiration about how your code should look. The example local plugin repository. Um, so this is fairly straightforward. It has basic functionality, but the important thing it does demonstrate is that it is possible for a single code base to support both core Moodle and workplace multi-tenancy at the same time. Uh, having the support for both products in a single code base is, is obviously 
benefit to anyone who wants to support both products because you don't have to maintain separate code bases for each. Um, this is a, a great example to look at. Uh, it includes uh, PHP unit and BHAT tests um, with Travis configuration for testing on both Workplace and Core Moodle. So this is something we think is very helpful, but we would also love to see um, fellow developers diving into this and uh, experimenting, playing it, playing with it, getting involved. Uh, feedback on this is all always welcomed. Integration tools. So your integration tools, these are your tools for rudimentary error checking, unit testing, um, ensuring that your code um, conforms to a baseline set of coding standards. Uh, so the coding standards are all well documented for Moodle developers. Um, some of you may be familiar with the Moodle plugin CI suite. Uh, this is very popular um, in for community developers, uh, especially with its uh, tight integration uh, when used with Travis. Um, so for those who are familiar with it, that's great. For those who aren't, I mean, whether you want to work on Workplace or Moodle, I think it's a great tool for you to, for you to have in your armor in. Definitely worth checking out. Um, so we use the Moodle plugin CI suite uh, internally within the Workplace team. Uh, we have continued developing um, these tools and some of our changes have been submitted upstream to the community edition um, for, for the benefit for the wider benefit of, of the community so in this repository you will find all of the additional checks and changes we have implemented um, all, all worthwhile for you to know about um, so again Feel free to explore these changes. This suite can be used as a drop-in replacement for the community edition, um, or just as a means to introduce uh, automated code testing for, for those who aren't currently doing that. So let's continue. So the language files, I'll cover this because it's a public repository. Um, and just so you're aware of what it is, it's uh, basically, the language packs for the entire workplace um, system. So that's all of the plugins provided within a workplace setup. All the language files are provided in this repository. Uh, it's versioned, so a translator is able to to view this repository and see track the changes between versions, um, get context for where the language strings are used, and Basically, it's a tool to aid in translation. I mean, obviously, we we want Workplace to be translated to as many languages as possible, and if this tool helps to achieve that, then we're all for it. API usage. So the recommendations on this slide are really not controversial. They're no different from interacting with any APIs from from any system, Moodle or otherwise. Um, the recommendation is use the APIs, basically. Um, the callbacks that I've mentioned should always be used. Um, this way, you are ensuring it works. And I know, as a developer, there's always a temptation to, to bypass that. Uh, explore the the back end yourself and manually generate the queries. Of course, you can do that. I would recommend you don't do that and always stick to the API, um, the public API that is provided by the multi-tenancy plugins. Uh, the, the key reason is that your plugin will continue to work while we continue developing. Uh, workplace. So while we refactor the back end, we implement new functionality. Um, the intention is always to provide backwards compatibility and ensure we don't break third party code, really. So 
Um, <clears throat> before we move to any questions or before I uh, sign off and let you all get on with your day, uh, I'm just going to talk about what's coming up in upcoming versions of uh, Moodle, specifically of Workplace, sorry, specifically in regard to the multi-tenancy. So this was briefly touched upon by Emilio in his overview of Workplace. Um, so it's really the concept of tenant shared learning and improving what entities can be shared between tenants. And so if you see the list, you, you're looking at the common workplace components, you've got program certifications, etc. Um, and it's about improving how those resources and entities are shared between tenants. Let me see. I'm just checking the chat. I don't think there's any questions yet. So I hope I hope that was interesting. Um, getting community developers, uh, plugin authors involved is something that we want to encourage. And obviously, we want to increase that ecosystem of um, third-party plugins that are available for Workplace. Uh, I believe this presentation will be shared afterwards. Um, all the things I've talked about and mentioned are, are linked. The documentation is thorough in places. Uh, it's a wiki. We, we'd always appreciate your feedback and help with improving it where, where you see fit. Um, all worth exploring. So. Here is the link to the Workplace homepage. Uh, that will give you more background, more context about Workplace as a product. It will provide information about talking to partners if you are interested. Um, there is my email address. Feel free to reach out to me or any of my colleagues on the team. I believe there's also a forum on the Moot website, so I will I'll be around to answer any questions. Uh, after this. Uh, so I'll just thank you for watching um, and hopefully next time I'll see you physically at a, a moot. Um, so that's me. If anybody does have any immediate questions now, good. Oh, good. I'm glad that someone is going to go and check those repositories out or just feel free to reach out whenever you like. So, okay, Barrett, yeah, I've got some private messages as well. I'll try and get to those. Um, yes, APIs are obvious, a great, a great thing to, to use. And good, you're already checking out the workplace repository on GitHub. Can we create multiple instances of database for Moodle? I I'm not sure exactly what you're asking there. Um, the intention of multi-tenancy is that you have a single site and all using the same database, depending on how exactly you're setting up your, your systems, rather than having a multiple database for each tenant. Are you able to share courses among the tenants? Yes, Sandy, that is something that is is currently um, implemented and used and is something as a developer that is is useful for you to know and know how to work with. Um, out of interest, do we have many developers or people here who are interested in making their code work with Workplace? So Sandeep asked the question, for shared courses, we should we use group mode for this? Yes, yes. For shared courses, in order to maintain isolation of the tenants, what Workplace will do is create a, a separate course, separate group within the course for the users of each tenant. So this is something to be aware of when for curriculum designers, um, when they're creating the course that that are all shared courses, they must use separate group mode. 
front page settings. So, Sandeep, are you asking about whether the front page looks different for each tenant? Uh, Summit, I will get to your question shortly. Sandeep. So currently the front page, uh, i.e. the page that lands <laughs> that lands after the user login, that is currently set. Um, there is some um, requests, which I think are quite similar to what you're asking, about having um, tenant-specific front pages. So to answer your, what I think is your question, no, each tenant has the same uh, land front page after logging in, um, but there is some work on the roadmap to look at that. The login page is one of the things that can be customized per tenant, uh, and that comes down to the look and feel of the site, uh, and that can be completely uh, different for each tenant. But once they've logged in, other than the styles, the um, dashboard has a familiar look across all the tenants. And Jali, where can I get a step-by-step -step manual to set up this for my organization? I recommend you reach out to your local uh, Moodle partner. Um, they will be able to provide um, a lot more information about how you would get started with this. Um, so, Summit, let me get back to your question. Apologies for the delay. Uh, is group mode within course per department division wise? So, the group mode, the groups that are created within a course are named after the department of the, sorry, after the tenant that the user belongs to answers your first part I think so your second part is about re reporting department level reporting is yes reports can be created to um, drill down by department level which I think is what you're asking please clarify if I've misunderstood you okay Fiona recommends if you have any general questions about workplace you can ask them here and I will try to answer them the best I can. Um, Kude, you're welcome. I hope it was useful. I hope there is something that you can take away from this. Uh, Suje, every company is isolated. Is that the case? There will be any relationship between child, company and parent? So it depends if you're talking there about tenants are about organization structure so with tenants yeah so with tenants there is no current uh, hierarchy where a tenant belongs to another tenant a tenant is considered isolated but within your organization structure it is possible to create the relationship you described there between um, a, a parent company and, and franchisees for instance yes so that is possible you're welcome. Like I say, if there are any future questions anyone has, uh, you've got my email address there. There's the forums. There's multiple mediums which can be used to contact me or my colleagues, and we're always happy to help.